This week's topic is safeguarding client trust, the power of lawyer trust accounts. And I want to explain it kind of at a high level. I know I've done so many videos about this topic, but I just want to go over it again and just kind of to re-educate anybody who may be new here, landing here. An attorney client trust is a fundamental principle of the legal profession. As bookkeepers, we have to handle our clients, clients trust funds with the utmost care and integrity. And this is where lawyer trust accounts come into play. So this video is going to give you some of the higher level tips that I think you need to know and also help understand how we would safeguard our clients' assets, which our clients' clients' assets, which is your retainers, is typically what I'm talking about. So what is a lawyer trust account? A lawyer trust account or an attorney or client trust account is a separate bank account used to exclusively hold client funds during legal proceedings. And this is a typical scenario where an attorney would, we'll just say John Smith Law Firm, hires uh, David Boyle as the client comes in and gives the John Smith money to take on his case or matter. So it's for future services and they take an upfront deposit. That's your retainer. So we're, it's important for us to ensure that these funds are not only used for their intended purpose, but also uh, imp specifically held, impeccably held, in, that's the word I was looking for, impeccably held in, in a detailed way so we know exactly what's in that account. So it's one bank account. We have to account for all the individual trust accounts that are inside of that. So individual ledgers for each client. Lawyers can establish trust and confidence with their clients through transparency of this accurate record keeping. That's where we come into play. And they have to abide by strict compliance and ethical rules and regulations. That's your bar association. So if you get your first attorney client, you wanna hop right over to the bar association for the state or the, the area where they're working and practicing the law and make sure that you're compliant. So when you look at it this way, maintaining client trust is the bedrock of the legal profession. Clients, attorneys, clients are entrusting their most sensitive matters, their personal information and their valuable assets, their cash to the attorneys. And they're expecting the highest level of care and confidentiality. This trust is the foundation upon which the attorney client relationship is built and lawyers are responsible for safeguarding that money at all costs and also safeguarding that detail, the data behind all of that. If they betray this trust, it can be it can have devastating consequences, not only for the attorney's client, but also for the lawyer's reputation, the integrity of the legal system itself. Um, it, it can be devastating. So maintaining, mishandling the client funds, it can be just as simple as a breach of confidentiality. It can also be using the money in the trust account in the wrong way, and it can lead to severe professional and legal consequences, including a disciplinary action or maybe loss of the attorney's clients, loss of their license to practice law, and even some criminal charges and fines. So it's a big, serious thing that we're working with. It's the big elephant in the room when you work with attorneys. So establishing and man managing a lawyer trust account is a pretty important job. Establishing and adequately managing that lawyer trust account is crucial in safeguarding the client's trust. And the process typically includes the attorney will open up a bank account. The bank account can be called IOLTA, IOLA, IOTA, tons of names. They're still trust accounts. It can be just called a simple trust account. An attorney can't go and just grab a savings account and put the money in a separate bank account as a savings or a money market and call it a trust account. It's not a trust account. There are guidelines around the type of account, what banks they can get these accounts from. So they open this dedicated account and then it's a special separate bank account. They put the funds in there because they haven't earned them. So they're still a client's funds and they keep that separate. And it's important to keep it separate from their distinct or their personal or business bank accounts. It's really important. It has to be FDIC insured. That's another very important. Some of these trust accounts you might run into with attorneys get really large amounts of money in it. it has to be FDIC insured. And then you have to ensure that when you get this funds coming in, so let's just say the attorney opens up a brand new bank account and opens it with hundred dollars. All you have in that bank account is the balance is hundred dollars and you have hundred dollars in the liability account. We use a sub liability account method, what we prefer to use. So we would make John Smith law firm and we would put that as a sub liability of client funds held in trust. So the main accounts client held funds held in trust. And then the sub will be the law firm of John Smith. 
and we put that hundred dollars in, that's your opening balance. This is a step that I see missing on a lot of files or throws the balances out of trust. It has to be in that liability account. And then the deposits go in and then they're going to be able to uh, get some interest coming in and the interest will leave. Uh, that's used to help poor people be able to get legal representation. So that money's used for that purpose. It's never part of the money coming in and out. And that's where you would make uh, an account called, um, it's a client trust uh, interest account. And I like to call it like a, tri a trust sweep account. So it's money coming in and out of that one account. This is where this work that we do is where we earn our salt. So we have to segregate those funds. And I like to put them in sub liability accounts, especially if a big account, it's important to do that. And we want to make sure that our client avoids commingling their funds. And it, it can have profound ethical and legal consequences if they do. The biggest thing I see, which I think attorneys don't really think about, is that uh, improperly dispersing those funds either before they're due, the client maybe say the attorney needs money and has to make his payroll but doesn't have, hasn't done the work for the client but still creates an invoice and moves it over, that's a no-no. Mm -hmm. I actually see this more on the flip side. I see the client will, uh, our attorney client will actually earn the funds, bill the client, make the trust apply it to the account, but not actually take the funds out of the trust bank account and move it over to the operating. And they leave it in for like a cushion. Also wrong, can't do it. It has to be moved to the business account when the money's earned. And this is such a simple little oversight. Clients kind of think it's not a big deal to leave a little cushion over there. And you, you usually can have a cushion by, it depends on the state, look up those rules at the bar association for your client where they practice law. Sometimes they can keep like $250 in there for wire fees that may be pulled out from the trust account or they order handwritten checks. See that still, and that happens. So make sure that that, if they're allowed to put a little bit of money in, they can, but don't, it can't be tens of thousands of dollars that's just sitting there, not moved to operating because that's hiding revenue from the IRS. And they don't like that too much. And it's also a bar infraction. So if they're audited and they see all that money just sitting there and the transfers haven't happened, that's bad too. We have to make sure the records are impeccable. A client can be randomly audited. They can be audited because a client puts in a complaint on that attorney. So those are things that are important to think about when the attorney's got these records. You don't get a lot of time. The bar sends out that notice of infraction or notice of audit. And when that happens, you have very little time. You want to have good records. You want to be providing that three-way bank reconciliation, which I have plenty of videos on that. Uh, three-way bank reconciliation is, is critical. So it's important that we help our clients effectively manage their trust accounts and demonstrate, help them to demonstrate their commitment to protecting those client assets and maintaining the highest standards of ethical conduct. So I hope this video is helpful. I know it was shorter on the shorter side, but it will definitely help you understand what trust funds are, understand where to go, understand how to set it up so that your client, your attorney client can sleep at night and not have to think about that. That's where our job comes in and it's, it's an important one. So we'll see you all next week. Bye now.